Hey everyone, a blessed celebration of the great feast of the ascension of our Lord into heaven and his mighty reign at the right hand of his Father. The vlog I have to give to you today, I've entitled Michelangelo's Pieta and the Coronavirus Death. I'm giving this vlog in the basement of the rectory. The rectory is the priest's house, and I'm standing next to this wonderful coffin uh, that is stored here uh, in our basement to meditate a little bit upon death, and especially the care of the dead at the time of death. If any of you have made pilgrimage to Rome and have entered St. Peter's Church there uh, to venerate the holy relics and to see uh, some of the incredible sacred things that are there. You'll no, you, you no doubt saw in the Southwest Chapel when you entered St. Peter's, there is Michelangelo's famous sculpture, that classic of Renaissance sculpture uh, called the Pieta. It's the Virgin holding the dead body of her son, our Lord Christ. No one standing before that statue can be unmoved. That statue is the witness, the, the visible witness of the Christian disposition towards the dead. That statue and the care that the mother of God took for her son Christ, together with the other myrrh-bearing women, uh, St. Nicodemus and St. Joseph of Arimathea, provide the, the model, the type of Christian devotion and care for those who are dying and who have died and for the days after death that have inspired Christian tradition for 2,000 years. That statue which was done in 1498 and 1499, and is the only piece, by the way, that Michelangelo himself signed, uh, that statue reflects in very tangible ways the true Christian heart towards taking care of those uh, who are dying and caring for them after their deaths. The Christian tradition has a tremendous, places tremendous value upon the sublime love of caring for the dead. The fathers are very clear that that love is a pure love that cares for the dead because the dead cannot return it. It's something that you offer without any expectation of return. You do it out of pure devotion. And this involves many things, of course. This involves being near those who are suffering, not hiding ourselves away from them because we're trying to protect ourselves. It means being near them. It means being with them through their great and final trial, reading prayers with them, comforting them, holding them nursing them, praying with them and for them all the way up until their last breath, making sure that the last rites of the church are being able to be given to those who are passing from this life into the next so that they can go with the inspiration of the Lord Christ within them right through the door of death into the next life. It also involves, after the repose, it involves uh, praying for their soul's repose, uh, it involves washing their bodies, clothing the body in, in, in the funeral garments that are worn by the deceased, bringing them to church, uh, praying for them through the funeral, waking them, praying them for the funeral, taking them to what will be their body's resting place until the second coming and the general resurrection of the dead, uh, commemorating them in a mercy meal. These are our, our sacred traditions and things that Christians have always done without fail for 2,000 years. Now contrast that, uh, supremely expressed by the Virgin's devotion, with the secularization of our society and the incredible sorrows uh, that have surrounded death during the outbreak of this pandemic as a result of the response of our secular society to, the, to this pandemic. One of the greatest tragedies, as you've heard if you've watched some of my, my teachings before, I consider one of the greatest tragedies uh, and one of the most inhuman, um, inhumane expressions of, uh, of, our, of our fear is that we have uh, insisted, our hospitals have insisted that people die by themselves, by themselves. Priests were not, have not allowed to be with those who are dying. Uh, it's very hard to get in for family members. And this has caused, of course, many people who are sick, not even to allow themselves to go to the hospital, not even wanting to be checked by doctors for fear that they might have to go to the hospital. And there they might die by themselves without the Christian sacraments. And the, the, making a good death is the great ambition of every believer, preparing for and, and making the most uh, and going through with faith into this greatest step 
towards the next life that we call death is extremely important. And so to have it all upended uh, by the protocol surrounding uh, this coronavirus has been truly tragic. Add on top of that, uh, the further catastrophe of the massive amounts of deaths that have taken place in nursing homes. You know, brothers and sisters, the, this is, of course, grist for uh, future reflections upon the very concept of the nursing home, uh, the very idea that uh, the elderly should die uh, in homes uh, and not in their family's home and not being cared by their own children. You know, one of the sad consequences with the breakdown of marriage and the family in our own culture, with the abandonment of Christian norms for family life, uh, is that the elderly have become very vulnerable. And many of them have died in, uh, have been, are collected together and cared for people who are not family, who can't show, despite the best efforts of our nurses and, and healthcare workers. You know, it's one thing to be a very loving nurse. It's something else to be a son or a daughter or a grandchild taking care of Yaya, taking care of, of Teta. I mean, that is a different story altogether. Uh, and part of the great sorrows during these days of the coronavirus is how many people have died not just alone, but uh, in our nursing homes where the infection has spread, the percentages of the deaths of coronavirus that have been in nursing homes are, have just been absolutely tragic and sorrowful to see. You might have heard uh, my efforts to bring to the attention of, uh, of the people of God the witness of the righteous Tobit in the Old Testament, for, for example. Tobit, of course, who has a book named uh, after him in the Old Testament. One of the great virtues that he was so respected by God for was his utter total devotion to burying the dead and giving proper burial rites uh, and, uh, to those that he found who were dead. In fact, that Old Testament witness uh, has inspired Christians who live post-resurrection, who no longer have uh, the fear of death that even Tobit had. Tobit knew that a supreme almsgiving and a supreme way to witness against death was to care for the dead. Uh, but he knew this even before Jesus had become incarnate and had faced death and conquered death and made death bow and become the vanquish, vanquisher of that, of that hideous uh, enemy that we call death. And so Christians have especially shown uh, this uh, outrageous love for those who are in the process of dying. Uh, this has been our tradition forever. I want to read to you just a beautiful word uh, it comes from the life, uh, this is in Simeon Metaphrastus' life of St. Marcion, St. Marcianos. Uh, and it describes his disposition towards the dying. Listen to this. In the life of St. Marcianos, we are informed that, among other things, he would go around at night in the squares and the narrow streets of the city, concerned about where and when he would find a dead person abandoned because of poverty. Upon finding such a person, he would rejoice as if he had found a precious treasure. Can you imagine? He would then take the deceased and would care for him, addressing him as if he were alive and saying, Come, brother, and communicate the love in Christ. And at this invitation of the saint, God, in order to reward the love of his servant, would permit the dead man momentarily to rise up and greet the caring servant of providence. Immediately after that, he would again die. Can you imagine what a witness in the life of St. Marcion? His devotion to taking care of uh, in the process of death and, and after death, even those that he didn't know, was so pleasing to God that God would allow the dead person to temporarily uh, revive in order to thank the saint for his loving care. What a, a witness. What a witness, brothers and sisters, uh, to the Christian sublime devotion to those who are dying and care for the dead. You know, this has always been our tradition, even though we have been losing it. We've been losing it for many years, uh, at least 60 or 70 years now. We've seen the growth of secular traditions in our own culture, which are eclipsing the, the Christian traditional devotion to the dead. One of those uh, traditions is the rise of mortuaries, professionals who are family members, uh, who have who have. Uh, started mortuaries, which have become a mega billion dollar business, separating. We, we now outsource all the sublime actions of preparing our loved ones. We don't have them die in our homes anymore. We, mo many people are dying in hospitals, which, forgive me, is a very sterile and 
unpleasant place to die. Instead of at home, in your own home, in front of your own icons where you have loved your family and spent your life and your time. Um, now we have people die in these strange conditions. They then get whisked off by people that they don't know uh, to mortuaries that charge hundreds and hundreds of dollars a day to store uh, departed loved ones. Believe me, we priests know all about mortuaries. We know what the, they store corpses in their basements. They're simple. They're nothing there. And they're charging more than fancy hotel rooms to store these corpses. No longer are, are Christians to traditionally washing and caring for the bodies of their departed. Somehow we think that that takes some sort of special degree, uh, when in fact it does not. It's something that Americans have always done. We used to wash our loved ones, dress them, make our coffins, dig the graves ourselves. This is our tradition for hundreds of years uh, until very recently. And one of the results of outsourcing to this growing, uh, very expensive uh, mortuary business uh, is that people haven't been able to afford to bury their loved ones. Burying your loved one now costs like a new car, $15,000. And so what do we do? Another secular tradition is cremation. I can hardly speak of it without wanting to uh, begin a new homily uh, about the uh, terrible reality of cremation. But our traditions, which are so old and so tested and so beautiful and so sublime and full of love and devotion, absolutely can be lived today. And thank God there has been a tremendous revival of uh, Christian rites for burial uh, and taking care of the departed. In fact, uh, during this uh, COVID pandemic, uh, a beloved family in my own parish had to move away from Southern California and move back of all places to New Jersey, a place that has been so hit by this uh, pandemic. But this family uh, helped me start in our own local parish uh, more than 10 years ago now, uh, what we call our, bar our parish burial society. It's something that our people uh, from all Orthodox countries always have known about, but we haven't practiced it much. It used to be neighborhoods would take care of the departed in their neighborhoods and parishes would have uh, their own uh, groups and, and uh, those who would prepare the bodies. What we did was we started a burial society, a ministry that included both men and women uh, that, that attends to those who are dying in the parish in their last days, prays with them, helps them to prepare, uh, takes them through the paperwork that's necessary. We've also made agreements uh, with a local mortuary. We received some basic training on, on the pre preparation of the body, how to plug the orifices, how to properly move the body, how to clothe de the departed loved one. Um, we've, through that relationship, we've been able to drive the cost of burial way down in order to enable our people to um, bury as we traditionally do without it bankrupting the family uh, and even families that haven't been able to do that by driving down the cost we've been able to raise money in the parishes always to ensure that we can give a proper proper and loving burial to our own people we've learned how to wake our people we've we, how to keep the people uh, in the church now instead of sending our people away for two three seven days to stay in the in the basement of a mortuary being charged outrageous, you know, Marriott luxury prop prices uh, where they can't be visited and they aren't being prayed for in person. Now we can, the average time of bringing a departed loved one to our, our chapel is five hours after death. Within five hours after death, the person uh, is brought to uh, our chapel and there our burial society can jump into action and clean the person and dress the person and the person can be surrounded by prayers and the reading of the Psalms uh, and we can bury by the third day. It's much, much easier to do than many think, many think. And I, I've, everywhere that I've gone and spoken about uh, the creation of burial, burial societies, I have been greatly blessed by the enthusiasm of Christian people to take up again the traditional and sacred rites that come from a loving heart and the example of the Mother of God, of St. Nicodemus and St. Joseph of Arimathea and the murdering women, and once again surround the departed uh, with the traditions, the sacred Christian traditions of the church. You know, maybe one of the benefits of being brought so close to death and in such an ugly and unfortunate way uh, that we've experienced these last three months, maybe one of the positives that can come out of this is that we can build again in our parishes uh, burial societies. I hope and wish and pray to God that that would take place 
uh, and that one of the great fruits of this sorrowful time would be a greater embrace of the sublime traditions of caring for the departed and offering our love for them uh, in this way. This coming Saturday, the Saturday before Pentecost, uh, is the Saturday of souls in which we will remember uh, in a prayer of love all of our departed loved ones who have gone before us to the next life. And what a wonderful time for us to give consideration uh, to the sacred rites so beautifully expressed uh, in Michelangelo's Pieta. And may the horrible sadness surrounding so much of the coronavirus pandemic deaths, uh, may it be a thing of the past. God be with you. Thank you for watching this video. Please pray for us and subscribe below and share this video with your friends and family. Our PNP ministry has more projects than we have resources. Would you consider making a tax-deductible contribution to us today? Thank you, and God's help.